Hey everybody, how are you guys? Hope you guys are good. Okay. So I just gotta say. SF did an interview today on the Glares channel. Which I had no clue who that even was. But I did want to hear um, what SF was going to have to say about Kylie's case. So I went on to watch it. The first thing I will say is after watching that and being in that environment in the chat, my channel deserves a lot more respect than it gets. That's the first thing I will say. So I made a comment about how mom should have been there when Kylie was found by AWP. And SF went on to say, oh, what a shitty thing that was to say. Um, the host then went on to call me stupid and idiotic for, you know, questioning anything, for for going against what the narrative was, right? Um, but, I, I mean, it, and then chat. Not everybody in chat. There's a couple cool people in chat. But, um, so after that, then chat started in. I mean, which, it didn't bother me. It is what it is. You know, the differing opinions. It is what it is. Um, but I was there to stand up for Kylie. So it didn't bother me one bit. Uh, I have people all the time, okay, that come into my lives that I disagree with. Uh, but I respectfully, you know, just say agree to disagree and because I'm not a child. I'm not immature. I, there's no reason to act like that. Um... And then I went on, after that was over, and then I went on and I saw that Xanime was live. And she was talking about, you know, Ryan and Kylie's case and the lawsuit and everything. So I went on there, and she was going over old clips of just showing how Ryan treated her, the things he said about her, which, granted, he did not, he was not very nice to her. I will say that. Um, but it just seems that a lot of people... And, and she said that she was just there to tell her side of the story, why she walked away, you know, why, you know, why it was the way that it was. Um, but it just seems that a lot of people that are hating on him because of things that he did or said while he was talking about Kylie's case, uh, saying that it was all for clicks and views, are actually now, in turn, using his name and the lawsuit to get clicks and views um, just so they can trash him and his character. So, I mean, it's pretty much the same exact thing they're accusing him of doing that they're now doing, except using his name instead of Kylie's name. Um, it's funny because I also said in the chat in there that SF, when I had you up on my channel for an interview, you literally said that you understand why people are so suspicious of this case because of how it was handled by Ellie. And so, now to be so rude um, and disrespectful because I simply said mom should have been there um, and, and, and questioning things for you to have that attitude when you literally said the same thing. And that's what I said. I said people really uh, got suspicious and started looking into this case because 100% because of how it was being handled by everyone involved. And he even said that himself. He said that's why he got in the case and got in his car and drove down there. Because he could see how it was being handled by Sam, the cops, and everybody else. So now to just be a douche like that, whatever. That's just some people. Um, but, I'm okay, so I'm just going to go over a couple things. Now, if it was just an accident, right... This was just a drunk driving accident. There would still be people culpable, like Samantha, who was 18 years old and said that all night long she was sharing alcoholic drinks and beverages with 16 year old minor Kylie. She should be arrested for that. If your kid goes out and gets a in a car accident because he was drinking and driving and you gave him the alcohol, Guess who's going to jail? You are. If you uh, give someone alcohol and they go out and they commit a crime, guess who that comes back on? You for providing them the alcohol. 
So why would it be any different in this case? Um, the next thing is, uh, and also if that was the case, then there wouldn't have been so many stories made up. Like, for example, the party going from 400 down to 200 down to 100 um, There wouldn't be so many confusing stories about the time. First it was 12.30, then it was 1, then it was 1.30. <laughs> there wouldn't be all of these things going on Right? There wouldn't be all these lies and inconsistencies happening if it was just an accidental, oh, she got drunk and she drove into the lake, you know? No harm, no foul. Come on. Um, a lot of people thought in the beginning that it was an accidental OD, that somebody gave her something and she OD'd and, you know, that they... They, if that was how it went down, okay, you wouldn't have had to create this story. The car wouldn't have had to go in the lake. If it was just an accidental OD and people looked at her at the party and were like, oh my God, she's passed out, like she's not breathing, there would have been no reason to push her car in the lake. They could have called 911. Nobody would have had any proof of who gave it to her. So they could have just called it in. That, and they wouldn't have had to create all this huge story. Would, wouldn't have had to. Now let's look at foul, foul play. Okay, which never seemed to be looked at in this case. There are more things that make sense at, to it being foul play than anything that could make it an accident. Now people questioning that, people asking questions, people questioning the narrative is what everyone's problem is. Like I said, maybe if people could get their shit straight and keep their stories in line, maybe we wouldn't be here. The fact of the matter is, something happened to her that night. Something. Someone knows. Someone was there. And nobody says a word. Okay? Um... I've already gone in to why, you know, I looked at her mom the way I did. I've already gone into all that. You guys know why. We've all gone into why and where and how Ellie dropped the ball here. All gotten into all that. You know why I feel the way I do about that. Um, you had Ellie act in the way they did. Letting teens take control of things. Letting an 18-year-old girl run, who was supposedly at the party, who was supposedly the last person to talk to Kylie. She's the one Ellie is letting interview other teens who were at the party. People who were there to search for Kylie were told to keep an eye out for a few things. One of those things being her necklace. They knew that she didn't have, even though nobody knew where Kylie was at this point, they knew to keep an eye out for a necklace. They knew that necklace was not on Kylie. How did they know that? They said to keep out, keep an eye out for her keychain. They knew Kylie did not have her keychain. How did they know that? They were also, people were also told to keep an eye out for bumpers and license plates. Wonder why that is. Just none of it. You know what I'm saying? It's just so crazy that you wouldn't ask questions. If you can hear all this and not ask any questions, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. But the rest of us who do are doing it for a reason. Um, you had Sammy talking about the friendly fights and how normally people argue over winning, but not this time. Sam, who was claiming to be her best friend, who was running the teen-to-teen -teen talks, 
drop your kids off, go far, far away. The girl who was drinking with Kylie all night. The girl who claimed that Kylie was so wasted and she knew no one was driving Kylie home, but she left her at a party with older men with hard drugs. She said Kylie was so wasted she could barely walk when Sam left her. Her best friend, right, left her there. Oh, then some time goes by and you find out that Sam and Kylie were never friends in the first place. So, why was Sam running the show? Why was Mags, who was Kylie's best friend, only at the party for 10 minutes and then took right off? What was she getting away from? What did she not want to see happen? What was the plan when Kylie got to the party that night? And we're not, we're, we're supposed to hear all this and we're not supposed to ask any questions about it. We're not supposed to question anything. Why did her mom wake up and call Jagger at 8 o'clock in the morning when they were no longer dating and Jagger was not at the party the night before? Why? I mean, you, you have all of this stuff and none of it makes any sense. And then the fire cams come out, right? Way later, way later. And everybody just jumps on accident bandwagon. Including her mother, who in the beginning said my daughter would never drink and drive. She was way too responsible, way too responsible. She would never. As a matter of fact, she's been at other parties before and she's called for a ride home because she knows not to drink and drive. And then all of a sudden, everything flips and everybody's screaming, drunk driving accident, drunk driving accident, drunk driving accident. As a matter of fact, Jagger put out a thing that said, um, if you had, if you had, Kylie was last seen at 1.30 in the morning, most likely drunk driving. How could you say that when you weren't there? Max couldn't have told you because she was only there for 10 minutes. Sam left before Kylie did. So how did how would anybody have known that Kylie was drunk, drinking and driving at 1.30 in the morning? Just too many suspicious things here. You know, so you want to hate on me for asking questions and not just taking the story, go right ahead. But there's a reason that I'm doing what I'm doing. There's a reason why people are questioning this case. And as a matter of fact, at the end of my interview with SF, and you can go back and watch it, he says, I mean, I encourage people to, to keep digging, to keep asking questions just as long as they're respectful of the family, you know? Yeah, but I'm the bad guy for questioning this. I'm the bad guy for trying to say, hey, listen, this story you're feeding us, all of this, it's not making any sense, doesn't add up. Oh no. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I love you guys. Stay strong, stay healthy, stay safe. Keep asking those hard questions. Keep spreading that light. And I will see you next time.